live from the National News Studio, Sri Lanka. A pleasant evening and a very warm welcome to the National News Broadcast. We are coming to you live from Rupalahi's News Studios. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. And I'm Shivan Pereira. Let's take a look at your headlines straight away. The President pledges that a strong economy will be established by creating competitive investment opportunities. The revised petition seeking bail for former Health Minister Kehelia quashed. Construction of Sitavaka new hydropower station started. Solar panel systems will be distributed among religious places from May this year. Agricultural Modernization Organization Council will be set up. Over 100 persons missing after the Taiwan earthquake. Sri Lanka secured the Test Series win against Bangladesh. But for those who know the stories in detail, President Ronnie Wickmasinghe affirmed his commitment to bolstering the nation's economy through the establishment of competitive investment avenues. Addressing attendees at the Investment Board Awards Ceremony uh, held at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday, the President underscored the significance of such initiatives. The inaugural ceremony coincided with the 45th anniversary of the Board of Investment, which, during which the President bestowed 30 awards upon the deserving companies for their noteworthy contributions to foreign direct investment and export performance, as well as recognizing long-standing active participants. A rigorous evaluation process was undertaken to ensure merit. Moreover, a new award category was introduced to honor individual contributions to the Sri Lankan economy. Notably, Brandix Group CEO Ashraf Omar, MAS Holdings co-founder and chairman Deshamanya Mahesh Amalin and Sail Lanka Yacht Group chairman Pierre Pringries uh, each participated with awards in this uh, category. President Vikram Singh personally conferred these accolades acknowledging their significant impact on the nation's economic landscape. Chairman of the Board of Investment Dinesh Virakkodi presented a photograph capturing the inauguration of the Biagama Investment Zone in, in 1981 to the President as a token of remembrance. In less than two years we have achieved, we, we, have, we are really keeping, we are no longer relying on the central bank or for that we are going out into the market. So, but this is not enough. What are you stabilizing? We are stabilizing an import dependent economy, oriented highly competitive economy. You have 10, 15 years to do it. And amidst that, the BOI will change its character again as the economic commission. We, bring, we look at the, some of the shortcomings, especially Approvals will be handled by one agency and that will take, even if ministries have any objections, it can be taken up, the minister will decide whether to go ahead or not. So I think with that we are going to solve one of the bigger issues and some of the other issue areas that are, some of the other issues also that have been worrying you will be disposed of. But secondly, we are going to separate the zones from the Economic Commission. Because our zones, especially Biagama and Katuna Aika, has achieved the status of being about the best in the South Asian region. People still say that's the best services. We've had others, I got involved in having Koggala, starting Sitavaka, some of the larger ones. But with this, we can stand on our feet. So we will have an investment zone, Sri Lanka. And people will then, you will be a license holder, you can run your own your own zones, so you need not worry to have one under the BOI, but what we have will be a separate company uh, holding the government zones together. There are many more to come. We are waiting till the official creditors committee sign the agreements. We have about a thousand acres now in Biagama. We are looking at about 3,000 to 4,000 acres in Trincomalee, another thousand acres in North in three batches about three to four thousand acres in Hambantota, not to talk of the smaller zones that we will develop. So this is 
as far as the infrastructure is concerned. I am happy to say that in a way I feel proud of GCC, Katunayak and Biagama because the second round of opening up in Asia took place after that. We were the ones who started, there are others who are ahead of us. But India, China, Vietnam, you name it, all of them came after us. We paved the way. So in a way that the GC is a symbol of the second round of opening up of Asia. Now we have to prove the third time that we can make it and we will do it. The Colombo High Court today dismissed the revised petition filed by the daughter of former Health Minister Kehli Rambukwala requesting to release him on bail. This decision was taken by the High Court Judge Sajiva Nishankar. The petitioner had stated that the decision of the Malika Khanda Magistrate Court not to grant bail for the suspect Kehli Rambukwala in detrimental to the, is detrimental to the law. The petitioner had requested therefore to revise the court's order and to grant bail for the former health minister. Meanwhile, another petition had been filed at the Court of Appeal to issue a writ order dismissing the Maliga Khan the Magistrate's court order to keep the suspect in remand prison until the case is over. The Court of Appeal today ordered to fix the petition for support on the 9th of this month. Former President Maitri Palasirisena has informed the Maligak and the Magistrate Court today that making a secret statement over the masterminds of the Easter Sunday attack is not necessary. Maitri Palasirisena did not appear before courts today and his lawyer Anuja Premaratna informed this matter to the courts. We move on with more local news now. Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva requested journalists to provide correct information to the public regarding the Sri Lankan Airlines. Uh, the minister made these remarks at a media briefing held today to enlighten the journalists over the purchase of five airbuses for Sri Lankan Airlines. The minister pointed out the importance of presenting correct information and the responsibility of media personnel in protecting national institutions. <laughs> minister Nimal Siripala de Silva said that to continue this aviation service we have to compulsorily purchase new aircraft. Purchasing an aircraft is not an easy task. It is a long process. Prior to the purchase our engineers should go to the relevant country to estimate the quality of the aircraft. After verifying all these facts, we have to purchase them under a leasing system. However, some journalists criticize the process of purchasing aircraft. Distribution of title deeds for the families whose lands were acquired for the first stage of Central Expressway project was held at the Ministry of Highways today under the patronage of Minister Dr. Bandala Gunawardana. 7,881 blocks of lands in the Mahara, Gampaha, Atanagala, Divlapitiya, Minuangoda and Milgama Divisional Secretariats were, were acquired for the Central Expressway project. A sum of 11,000 million rupees has been paid as compensation for the families who lost their lands. 71 such families were provided with title deeds for the new blocks of land already located for them. These land blocks are located in Amanwatha. Minister Dr. Bandala Gunawardana said that the compensation allowances cannot be paid to the affected families since the country went bankrupt in the past period. Some individuals have treated us to commit suicide if they will not be compensated. Even the Treasury did not provide us funds. However, the Road Development Authority has been able to pay 361 billion rupees of funds to the road contractors during the past two years. For the first time in history, they were paid by auctioning Treasury bonds. State Minister Lasantale Giavana said that the government is thankful for these families extended their full support for the National Development Project. The power project commenced yesterday. Now this project adds a capacity of 14 megawatts to the national grid. It costs 9 billion rupees and construction is expected to be completed within 18 months. Well, and I'll go to Gramani Ladari divisions at the Dehiovita Divisional Secretariat area. Two dams will be constructed across the Sitavaka River. The power stations set up at both dams will generate 7 megawatts of electricity at each power station. The construction is carried out by a state-owned company, Sri Lanka Energy Private Limited. State Ministers Indikano Rudda, Kanaka Herat and Tarakabala Surya were present at the groundbreaking ceremony. 
State Minister Indikan Rudu said that all religious places in all districts will be provided with solar power panel systems from first week of May. State Minister Indikan Rudu said that the government has faced a challenge of adding 70% of renewable energy to the national grid. Use of fuel and coal power projects has been limited to 30%. We are seeking for more and more renewable energy sources. We face many difficulties in opening up these renewable energy sources. The government has aimed to provide solar panel systems to families in all districts by the first week of May this year. Selection of children for the fourth stage of Guan Sihinaya program, jointly organized by the National Television and Civil Aviation Services Authority, commenced at SLRC premises yesterday. 100 children were selected and they will be taken to Katanayak International Airport premises for educational tours on the 8th of this month. This program has been implemented to educate children on the matters relating to the civil aviation sector in Sri Lanka. For the fourth stage, over 2,000 children between 13 to 16 years have sent their applications. Out of them, 100 were selected by a computer-related raffle draw yesterday. It was conducted by internal auditor of the SLRC, Thilana Kulatunga. The selected children will be given certificates as well up on completion of the tour. Sri Lanka Airport and Aviation Services Company, Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering and Sri Lankan Aviation Sen Services School also supported for this program. Further information is available at the Rupavani News YouTube channel. Now the Sundaranur Elias Salalihni Vasante will be held until April 25th. Today is the third day of this event. Various entertainment programs have been organized in many parts of New Aurelia, including the Gregory Le Visit the City during the festive season. Sundara Nuarelia Salalihini Vasante Spring Fest Didahas Visi Hakara Sri Lanka Insurance Life Samaga. There are many innovative experiences within the Sundar Nuarelia Salalihini Vasante. Other than beautiful flowers, strawberry cultivation provides the visitors a variety of entertainment. They can taste strawberry and can enjoy visiting many varieties of the fruit, including red, white and many other. The national television is ready to telecast these innovative experiences to the entire world. President Ranil Vikram Singh has declared the formation of an Agricultural Modernization Organization Council, which will be chaired by both the President and the Prime Minister. The primary objective of this council will be to oversee the reconstruction of ministries, institutions and organizations associated with agriculture in Sri Lanka. President Vikram Singh announcement during a progress review meeting of the Agriculture Modernization Programme held at the Presidential Secretariat this morning. He emphasized that the establishment of the new council aims to enhance the efficiency of government institutions involved in the Agricultural Modernization Initiative. At the meeting, Senior Professor Gamni Senanaika, Chairman of the Expert Committee, presented the policy framework devised for the modernization sector in Sri Lanka to the President. The policy framework devised for the implementation of the Agriculture Modernization Program in Sri Lanka encompasses various key objectives. These include enhancing productivity and efficiency, promoting sustainability and resilience, fostering inclusive growth and rural development, ensuring food security and nutrition, improving market access and trade, strengthening institutional capacity and governance, and fostering innovation and entrepreneurship. During discussions, it was revealed that 26 projects have been meticulously chosen from 26 divisional secretariat divisions covering all 25 districts for the initial implementation phase of the Agricultural Modernization Program.
Now an awareness program over the government's development projects was held at the Government Information Department under the patronage of Minister Dr. Bandulugan Wardana. Journalists and media personnel were educated on these projects at this discussion. Heads of media institutions, media secretaries of ministries, media officers of government institutions, media officers of ministers and governors were present at this meeting. Secretary to the Media, Mass Media Ministry, Anusha Palpita, Director General of Government Information, Dinet Karuna Ratna were present at this occasion. Minister Dr. Bandulugan Wadhana said that when conducting development projects, people should understand the importance of development. Some people question what is the use of roads, people need food first. Advice to the Ministry of Mass Media, Mohan Samaranayaka, said that 100,000 children in the northwestern province are suffering from malnutrition. This has been stated by the governor of the province when he stated providing a free meal for children. It is a timely measure to help the malnourished children. However, newspapers only highlighted the governor's comment on, on the number of children suffering from malnutrition. Media did not highlight the commencement of the free meals program. Media should not look at the things from negative attitude always. This is very dangerous within the social media culture. Social media always insults people and the level of fake allegations against innocent people. And we have more news from home in brief. A drug Kingpin named Sedavat Tessana has been arrested by police. The police has also taken into custody over 10 grams of ice and five swords in his possession. This suspect has maintained relations with the organized criminal gangs. Police has dispersed a protest campaign held in front of Sri Jawadhanapur University using tear gas and water cannons. Police say university students had attempted to block the road and start a protest march. A smart air condition system was installed at the Colombo Postal Headquarters premises today under the grants of Asian Development Bank Funds, Assistant Administrative Officer of the Ministry of Mass Media, Deepal Yenage. The second stage of the new intensive care unit of Colombo's East Base Hospital was declared open under the patronage of Health Minister Dr. Ramesh Patirana. A philanthropist has donated a sum of over 20 million rupees. A mother elephant and her baby trapped in an agricultural well in Sandikavava area in Kahatagas, Tengalia, were saved without any harm to the animals. And that's all the news we have from home. Stay tuned for the latest update on Taiwan's earthquake. And in foreign news, rescue efforts are underway in Taiwan after a 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck the island's eastern coast. The disaster has killed at least nine and injured more than 800 people. This was the strongest quake to hit Taiwan in 25 years, trapping 127 people in collapsed tunnels and on mountainous roads along the rugged coastline. The epicenter was 18 kilometers to the south of Hualien city. Nevertheless, strong tremors were felt all the way to the capital Taipei, more than 100 kilometers away. It also triggered tsunami alerts earlier in the day nearby Japanese and Philippine islands, which were later retracted, causing a huge damage in Hualien. Rescue operations were able to reach 77 people who were trapped in Jinwen and Qingxi tunnels along the road in Hualien. Pictures show how the road outside. Now in more foreign news, China has been stepping up its game on electric cars and foreign media reports Chinese smartphone company Xiaomi starts delivering the first of more than 100,000 electric vehicle orders. 
The CEO and the founder Li Jun asserted at a ceremony in Beijing that Xiaomi's SU7 enters a crowded China electric vehicle market with an attention-grabbing price tag under 30,000 US dollars for the base model, cheaper than Tesla's Model 3 in China. The company previously said pre-orders had hit nearly 100,000 within 24 hours of its starting to take orders on Thursday. It also aims to become one of the world's top five automakers in the next 15 to 20 years, marking the first deliveries that come from a limited batch of 5,000 cars. It was named as the founder's edition, equipped with additional accessories for early buyers. The SU7, which has drawn comparisons with Porsche's Taycan and Panamera models, has a minimum range of 700 kilometers. Xiaomi's share surged as much as 16% yesterday as the SU7 drew strong interest. The company earns a majority of its 37.5 billion US dollars revenue from selling smartphones. Cut to me, hot and spicy, never was a Sri Lanka won the second test against Bangladesh by 192 runs today, sealing the series win to Stilil. The match was played at Zahur Ahmed Chaudhry Cricket Stadium in Shattagram. Sri Lanka scored 531 runs in the first innings and Bangladesh scored only 178 runs in the first innings. Sri Lanka declared the second innings with 157 runs for 7 wickets, hosting a challenge of 511 runs for Bangladesh for victory. Bangladesh started the innings today with 262 runs for 7 wickets. They needed to score 243 more runs with 3 wickets. However, they couldn't reach the target. May the Hazan scored 81 runs not out. In bowling, Lahiru Kumara, Sri Lanka has reached to the fourth position of the World Test Championship points table. Both Man of the Match and Man of the Series were claimed by Kamidu Mendes. More sports news. England won the match of uh, the under-19 women's Tri-Nation T20 cricket tournament against Sri Lanka by six wickets today. Uh, the match was played at the Hamantara Mahindra Rajapaksa grounds. Batting first, Sri Lanka scored 126 runs for nine wickets in their allotted 20 overs. Ashani Kaushalya scored 24 runs, while Sanjana Kavindi scored 20 runs. In bowling, Awali and Charles Stubbs claimed two wickets each. In reply, England passed the victory target in 14.4 overs. Davina Perrin scored 54 runs. The news from the IPL, Lucknow Super Giants won the IPL T20 cricket tournament match against the Royal Challengers Bengaluru by 28 runs. The match was played in Bengaluru yesterday. Batting first, Lucknow Super Giants scored 181 runs for 5 wickets in their 20 overs. Quinton de Kock scored 81 runs while Nicholas Puran scored 40 runs not out. In bowling, Glenn Maxwell claimed 2 wickets. In reply, Royal Challengers Bengaluru could only score 153 runs all out in 19.4 overs. Mahipal Lomror scored 33 runs. In bowling, Mayant Yade claimed 3 wickets. And that's all the news we have for tonight. Join us tomorrow at the very same time for the very latest on Channel I. I'm Dhananjali, together with Shiva, signing off. Good night.